when the guys put the protocol together, everyone looked at it like, you're building it in Rust? Are you crazy? All the developers are in Solidity, EVM. It's like, okay, that's good. They're crypto developers. We want all the other developers that are out there in Web2 at the moment. It's about giving the developers that choice. You want to build on Rust? Great. Come build on the, on the base chain. Want to build in Solidity? Cool. Aurora. And we've also got Substrate with Octopus Network as well, who are built on top. So giving the developers the tools they need to succeed, that's what we're about. Dear crypto community blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonite, the NoBS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And we're here live from the Paris Blockchain Summit week. It is incredible, we're meeting tons of good people and talking about incredible things. You may have heard of Near Protocol, one of the hottest blockchain L1s in the space as of today. And today we have Mark from Neil Protocol. Good to see you again, brother. Yes, my brother. Yeah. Happy to be here. So, so happy to have you. Congratulations for the new step. And I'd love to ask you, Mark, because we met way before Near Protocol. We're bros from back in the day. Tell me a little bit about this, this transition and how's life these days. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so good. I used to work in FinTech, as you know very well. And I ran into one of my colleagues or or customers, as it were, from FinTech. But it's like, you look so happy, man. You look like you're enjoying life. And I don't know how I look happy because I think I look haggard. I feel haggard after this conference and speaking to so many people. My throat's sore, I can barely talk now, but it is, life is good. The transition's been magnificent, right? So as you know, I've been into crypto since 2017, got involved in the Swiss Borg ICO. It was like the second ICO I ever invested in. And I was just in the space as a hobbyist. And we all know that the bear market hit in February of 2018. But I was sucked in by that point, you know, here for the tech, all that kind of stuff. And I managed to make a really good community within Twitter, Telegram groups, all that kind of stuff, making lots of friends who had been here for a while. And through those relationships building up in the hard times, I was able to capitalize in the good times, um, knowing which projects to follow um, and speculate on and all that kind of stuff. And that put me in a position where I was able to take a risk in my career. And uh, I was very fortunate that Nier came calling in April of last year. They reached out to me on LinkedIn because they'd seen I'd posted about crypto and all that kind of stuff. And they needed people of my particular skill set. Um, so I was enjoying my job at the time in fintech. It was really good. I was successful. Um, but my heart's in crypto, right? It's about empowering users to have the sovereignty and the control over their wealth, right? And increasing the velocity of capital from people that have it and they want to share it out and distribute it to the people that need it. And so it was time to you know, align my career with my passions and belief. And I'm really, really fortunate to be in a position at Near Protocol in business development and partnerships, working with team, looking to build in the space and I've pretty much got the best job in the world. Yeah, definitely the best job in the world and the velocity of the capital, as you said, is such a beautiful thing that is coming in this space. You know, you're a really intelligent guy and I'm sure that before accepting a job in a, in a crypto company, which by the way, you were telling me about it, it's like, I love, I love FinTech, but I want to get more involved. You probably had many options. It's kind of like, should I work for Polkadot? Should I work for Near? Should I work for Ethereum? And consensus is in London. What made you kind of like, first of all, like how do you choose and what are some like criteria that you think are valuable when looking at blockchains? I think when it comes to blockchains, it's, Good to be early and with all the other L1s, they kind of had a presence. People knew about those kind of things. And in life, to make a mark on something, you know, you can either hang on the coattails of something that's got momentum and ride that momentum, or you can create that momentum yourself. And when it comes to my personal network of people within the industry, um, also people within FinTech, I got some really good positive confluence about what they were doing at Nia. And I hadn't really heard about it too much at all. And the reason for that is because, 
you know, the guys at NIA are tech first. They're 100% tech fo focused and their head is down. They ship before they market, 100%. And other chains out there are focused on hype marketing, getting people to shout about it, all that kind of stuff. Whereas NIA is 100% focused on, on the tech, making sure that it's a practical solution that people can build on with confidence. That's the most important thing, right? Because you need devs to create applications, programs, and then it can't worry about the network going down because how are you ever going to achieve mainstream adoption if your application or network is always crashing, right? So it's about the tech first and foremost, understanding if you've got the tech, that's your first principle, right? Everything else can be built on top of that. You can build an operational team, you can build a sales function, you can build marketing, but that primitive layer of the tech needs to be there. And that's where I got the most positive confluence about what is going on at Nier. All right, guys, question of the week. What is your favorite project building on Near Protocol as of today? Let us know in the comment section below and you'll be eligible for a prize. Woo! So it's not just the timing. You wanted to get in early stage because you really want to help build up that company. But you also mentioned the mindset, right? Like we're not going to shill, we're not going to overly market, we're just going to build tech and deliver. So it's a mindset, the timing, and then I guess the, the community itself with your connections, you just thought these are good people, I want to work with them. Is that pretty much? 100%. It's kind of surreal when you follow someone like Ilya, who's our co-founder, who's obviously this gigabrain Chad, and it's impossible not to get imposter syndrome when you're on a call with him or in a meeting with him, but he's just a brilliant guy who focuses on what he's doing and building that, and how could you not want to work with someone like that who's just mission-driven, purpose-driven on building this platform that helps people, you know, distribute, distribute capital, receive capital, those kind of things, and that it shows with what he's done with the recent Unchained Fund with the um, charity donations of crypto in the Ukraine. It's obviously being Ukrainian, it's something he's very passionate about and using blockchain to fulfill that purpose um, shows the world what kind of use case we have here, right? We're able to get capital to people on the ground in a war zone where they need it. Whilst, you know, the traditional payments network, you take a couple of days, T1, T2, to clear a payment into Ukraine. And, you know, it's a shame that a tragic event like that had to happen, but that use case is right there for everyone to see. And not just the wars, but the protests and all of these kind of areas where you're, you're blocked by, by these legacy systems, right? Like that, so, um, and in terms of like, near itself like if you had to obviously it's all about building l1s that help anyone different different use cases but are there like some other like statistics that you like to look at when comparing blockchains you know a lot of people talk about transaction speed tps you know the throughput gas fees and all that but are there any specific technological edges that you find near has technology edges the proof will be in the pudding when the network you know achieves escape velocity and a lot of people using the network because we've built something called uh, Simple Nightshade, which is our sharding mechanism. When I talk about sharding, it means that the blockchain can separate itself into different compartments to increase throughput and scalability. So right now, the near blockchain is operating on four separate shards. And also what it allows us to do and enterprises to do is build a private shard. So if they have an application that they don't want to be part of a public blockchain or have any other traffic or any other throughput affect their particular application, they can go out and deploy on a private blockchain, a private shard of, of the near protocol language. And so when the near protocol gets upgraded, even though it's private, you can still upgrade that chain when the protocol upgrades. Um, so from a technology point, thinking ahead and my background dealing with enterprises and businesses, I can see why um, that would be really, really cool for um, different enterprises and use cases because you saw Aave did it with their, their pool. They've got a permissioned DeFi fund um, where you, know, you have to go through KYC and all that kind of stuff because it's kind of like a private infrastructure. Yeah, we can do that too. You can build that private infrastructure. So you, know, you think a big, big banking app or a big privacy app or something like that that doesn't want any interruption from any other network on the blockchain and that's possible with Nia, and that's what really, really excites me. That's really cool. I think one of the cool things that Avalanche does is they have the subnets, which are you yeah. know kind of like side chains where you can create your own rules. It's your own house. You're not paying rent, you know, somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. In terms of the actual scalability, and you know, a lot of people talk about the blockchain trilemma. Obviously, you have the sharding. You have great code. A lot of the devs love you guys for the having such clean code and. Uh, what are some of the ways that you guys are, are planning on scaling the technology? And Our mantra is simple, scalable, secure. 
we like to keep things as simple as possible. And if you haven't downloaded a Near Wallet, um, it's something I, I recommend you go and try and do because the account-based system is yourname.near. So my Twitter username is Nakamiado. So my Near account is Nakamiado.near. So when I'm interacting with people talking about, here's this NFT, oh, you want to send me an NFT? I'll send you one. I can say mine, it's Nakamiado.near. It's not a complicated private key that you go X, Y, Z, O, X, zero. Like it's, yeah. it's not possible, you know, grandma.near. Auntie Mavis .near, you know, I want to send you this cool NFT, all that kind of stuff. And when you're talking about what's going on in the GameFi ecosystem and the NFT ecosystem, it will be kids in the playground, you know, guys who are playing soccer, they'll be showing their NFT collections and swapping them and, you know, doing that. And you can do that with a, a quick flip in the wallet. And it's about having that access straight away and being able to do that in the simplest manner possible. We really, really concentrate on the user experience and the de developer experience. That is our core focus. If it's not easy for developers to do, how are they going to come and build something that the users love to come and use? Like that's that's what it means for us to be scalable. Build an, an environment and nurture creation where it's very simple to do and the scalability will take care of itself. So I'm assuming the next step for near is to have tons of cool decentralized applications. Is that what you're you guys 100 percent So so we're a general purpose blockchain. Um, we don't have any particular nuance of what kind of applications come and build on Nia. If you care about simple, scalable, secure blockchains as a host for your application, come and build with us. From my position in business development and partnerships, I'm speaking to a lot more kind of creative-led platforms. Um, so music kind of NFTs, uh, NFT marketplace, like NFT kind of insurance platforms, as well as marketing, advertising, Web2 businesses that are coming to look and deploy in the blockchain space because, you know, we've got the cookie apocalypse, the post cookie apocalypse coming up where you can't track user data anymore. And blockchain will be a very, very valuable tool to businesses and enterprise to understand how they activate users from campaigns like airdrops and all those kind of things. So yeah, very interesting space. That makes a lot of sense. And obviously I have to ask you about the token economics. The, you guys, the token has done really, really well. Can you kind of explain how the token works from a validator standpoint to the user standpoint, et cetera, et cetera? Sure, it's like Ethereum, it's a gas token. It's used to transact on the network. And we're a proof of stake consensus mechanism. So there are quite a few validators where you stake the token um, to help provide the consensus of the network. So it's pretty straightforward. Token is used for gas, storage of applications on the wallet, interacting with different smart contracts, and uh, yeah, stoking it to validate the network. And do the, the actual people, developers that want to create decentralized applications, do they also need near tokens in order to build a project or to pay for their own gas fees? Is that so you pay for storage. Storage. Um, so yeah, it's the token is used to to for that element of the smart contracts. Amazing. And double digits is great, right? I mean, there's good yield on it as well. There's some uh, platforms that offer good yields. Well, it's it's a proof of stake consensus mechanism, right? And we need people to contribute to the network. Um, and the only way you can do that is by incentivizing them to do so. It'll be interesting to watch how that plays out as the network grows larger. We've just um, taken another step towards decentralization by allowing what we call chunk producers to help validate the network. So you don't have to produce a whole node to, to validate the network. It's just a chunk of the transaction to validate there. So to, that will help further the mission of decentralization even further. But you know that's our goal as an L1 to keep on decentralizing as much as possible. But that's exactly it. You know, a lot of people, you know, when a new blockchain comes out, and that's because we're near for other blockchains I've seen is like, yeah, but look how centralized they are relative to X project. And I'm like, but you all start that way, right? Give you us start a break. with yeah, little, give little us, validators. We, we haven't been on mainnet for <laughs> less than two years. So like, it, it takes time, right? Yeah, 100%. But we've got time. We've got a passionate team. That's what we're trying to do, and we'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's how it is. I, I remember seeing someone in London at one of the panels of Crypto Compare, and he was saying it all starts with limited amount of validators and nominators, and it grows, just grows over time, and becomes more and more decentralized. Is that is that how you see it, basically? 100%. And, and it's, you know, you're looking at the infrastructure that's in, in place to build that out, right? Exactly. So it, yeah. it just takes time for these kind of partnerships to happen and people to look at the network. But when you're mission driven and purpose driven, like all the time in the world is worth doing that stuff because you see the end goal. And the end goal is about creating a platform that creators can come and build something on and it will always be there. Like you never have to worry about getting deplatformed by centralized, um, you know, 
places like Twitter, YouTube, all that kind of, you build an application on those things, they can censor you, right? You need to give builders the confidence that it's always going to be there. You can contribute to that open source code, right? If you don't like something, you think you can do them better, have at it, go for it. We absolutely encourage that kind of environment. And speaking of which, you know, you're telling me earlier, like, you know, when you're creating L1 or any L0, L1, L2 infrastructure, one of the biggest challenges for every company are the devs, right? And for those reasons, you guys are making the tooling amazing, right? So that they want to actually come. Yeah. Is, yep. is, that, is, that, is that mainly the challenge for every like, company? 100%, I think it doesn't matter who you work for or what industry you work in. Human capital is your biggest challenge, right? And you need to build interesting incentive structures for them to take part and contribute to the network. We've got a particular tool at NIA where the devs can actually, who build the smart contracts themselves, actually get 30% of the gas fees of the transaction. So they can build that into there and get those funds transferred to their own wallet that they create. So now you imagine that you build a smart contract for whatever purpose, and in the future, that smart contract is used 50 million times a day by you know, an Internet of Things device. The cost of gas is absolutely minimal, transactions less than a cent. But in a few years' time, um, when something's being used 50 million times, that's an incentive for a dev to create something that has utility, right? Um, so yeah, we're excited about having the devs build there and, and making sure the right incentives mechanisms are in place to, to do that. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, the earlier you get in at building awesome tooling for a company, likely the more rewarded you'll be because you know 100%. you guys are up and coming. So for those watching out there, if you're a developer, who should they go? How should they take action if a developer is like, okay, wait, I want to try to build something on here? Yeah, so near university, that's the best way to go through. Go through the course and then you know via that mechanism. Once you get certified, we've got jobs boards and all those kind of things and getting involved in the community. The forum, near.org, that's where a lot of good stuff is happening. The Discord, you know, that's where developers like to hang out. And we've also got a grants program for developers. If they're building a smart contract that has long-term benefit for the ecosystem, then I'm very happy to speak to you guys because you know, I'd, I'd love to reward you guys for doing that building and, and building something open source that the entire community can use. Amazing, that's the way to go, and it was amazing having you on the show, Mark. Yeah, man, absolute privilege. Keep up the great work yeah. to uh, help you know near reach its near perfect future. It's an, <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege, my friend. Love it. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and blast that bell notification so you get access to more of these timeless interviews. We'll leave links below so you can find out more about the near protocol of the hottest topics of today. See you next week. Premiere at a PC near you, eight o'clock BST. Take care, guys. Yeah.